You know. You know. <laughs> Don't, oh dear. Hi and welcome to today's video. It is going to be a little different than usual. It's going to be a little more chill, a little more less formal. Not to say that my videos are normally particularly formal, but this one's going to be extra chill. So usually one of the most common videos I get asked to do is talk about my thoughts and what I've been reading, and I just often don't get around to doing them. What I've been really wanting to do is to do kind of a vlog where I just film a little bit every time I've read a volume, no matter where I am, just like finished it just film my thoughts and then like combine it into one video. So that is what this video is going to hopefully be. Fingers crossed I remember to keep up with it. My hope is to try and do it for the month of March. Don't know when I'm going to post this yet because I've not actually got it in the schedule as of right now, but that is hopefully what this video is going to be. I really hope you enjoy it. I'm looking forward to talking about manga when it's like really fresh in my head. I've just read it, now let's talk about it. Do forgive me for the various states of disrepair you'll probably see me in. Most of the time I'm, because I work from home, most of the time I'm just usually in like pajamas. <laughs> and my hair really weirdly off on my head. <laughs> so forgive me for how you shall see me. I'll at least try and slightly tidy myself up if I need to film a bit. Just before I talk about the volumes I've already read so far, don't forget to give this video a like, comment and subscribe. Also check out my social media and affiliate links found down below. So it is the 2nd of March and I read two volumes of manga yesterday. The first one I read was The Princess of Convenient Plot Devices, volume one. This is a new release and I picked it up in Forbidden Planet International in Manchester. I was very excited because it is kind of isekai-y and she's kind of, well no, no sorry, it is an isekai, it's kind of villainess-y. She is kind of the villainess-ish, sort of. She's been painted to be that way but we've not really heard too much about the original story yet, fully know. Basically the main character is being used into, or wasn't too, I can't remember if it was a book? Yeah, into her favourite BL novel, and like the main fictional couple from this BL novel, she is the sister of one of the dudes. And basically through some weird happening, she's kind of told people that she has a boyfriend, and she's now trying to quickly find someone to pretend to be her boyfriend is kind of the plot from her side of the story but there is a whole bunch of plot and story going on with other characters like the main BL couple so I think the, the white head guy is her brother but like BL relationships is more like the norm um, men, men with men is more normal than say men with women but there are men who are interested in women um, which is there's kind of a whole weird thing where like it's quite common in royalty that they might marry a man and then adopt children from their closest female relative. That was a bit weird. Me, I didn't enjoy it. I did actually run off to go and pre-order volume 2 straight after this. I think after I read it, I think it comes out in like June. So I'm gonna have ages to wait. Also, I love the pink on this. It's such a nice pink. If I talk that much about every volume I read in March, it's gonna be such a long video. <laughs> Maybe I'll just keep forgetting to read volumes. Though March last year in 2022, I read 66 volumes. I don't know if I'll be able to read 66 volumes this month. I've got a lot of things happening. I'm traveling a bunch of work. Though that might mean I read more because I'm traveling and I can just sit and read. Okay, the next volume I read yesterday was Cross-Dressing Villainess Cecilia Sylvie 3. I love this volume, I gave it a 10 out of 10. This had like everything I wanted at volume. Oh, also, by the way, spoilers for this video. I'm gonna be spoiling most volumes that I talk about, so do be warned about that because I hate spoilers so much. So if I start talking about a volume, I'm probably gonna start talking about spoilers. I won't start talking about spoilers immediately, so if I say the name of the volume and you wanna jump ahead because you don't wanna hear about it, feel free to do that. I won't just you know, immediately go, Here's this spoil. I won't do that because I hate spoilers so much. But there will be spoilers for volumes. I feel like, yeah, volume one, it's a volume one. You, you need to know about volume one to be able to be interested in reading it, right? But beyond that, when I talk about later volume numbers, just be aware. Oh gosh. You know. Ah. Uh, you know. No. <sighs> Thanks. I don't even know how I had this angled now. We're just going to hope for it. And now she's sat in a lampshade. Okay. Okay, so we have Cross Dressing Villainous Sylvia Sylvie 3. I really enjoyed this volume. There was a dramatic kidnapping. There was 
dramatic rescues. There was a wonderful reveal around one of the other characters that actually made me cry a little. I was just like, this is so lovely. And it's not something I'd seen in Isekai really before. And I was just like, oh my heart. I really love this one. It's kind of wrapped up the kind of arc it was going through and it's just started a new one by the end of the volume. And it feels like it's going to be a big one. It's quite a big story heavy arc that it's jumping into. Where's some of the really nice scenes? Oh, I went past it. Where is it? How Look how wonderful that is. Oof. Oof. There's a, a villainess jumping out to save the heroine from being kidnapped. Ooh. Yeah, they are the two that I have read so far. Although, after filming this, I'm going to hopefully sit down and do some more reading. I have more villainesses kind to read. <laughs> okay, hopefully the camera isn't too bad. I'm using the front one today. Hopefully the natural real light makes it a bit better. Also, I'm all the draggly. I just got out of the shower and my hair is still very wet. Anyways, yesterday I read two volumes of manga. I read, read Villains Destined to Die 2 and Oshinoko 1. Now, Villains Destined to Die, I just want to say, like, I am absolutely obsessed with this. The easy press print I think it's absolutely lovely I mean it's, it feels so hefty it feels so clean and I love that these volumes look like they're gonna be rainbow volume one was pink now I've got yellow yeah. also what a pretty cover and also they're so thick I feel like I just kept reading like it just seemed to keep going on and on and I was so happy because I was enjoying it a lot really enjoyed this I think I enjoyed volume two more than I enjoyed volume one um, as in, I think I gave volume one an eight and I gave this one a nine. So in this one, we were introduced to another one of the love interests from the story, which um, who was a slave and she's gone and bought him now. And she's like relying on him as like her get out. She'll probably be able to romance him out of all the options. So she's now bought him and he's living in the like manor with her and some of the other love interests and there was just a lot of progression with that. We had some progression with the other love interests. What I think re I really like about Villains Destined to Die compared to other villainess stories is because the villain, because often in these sort of stories, she's like, I'm the villainess, they don't want me. So they're usually pretty oblivious, but in this they've got like the icon, the number, the affection percentage above their head. Where have we, where have we got one? show you so yeah we've got the affection above the guy's head so she can actually see that they're going up so she's really confused she's like i'm saying things i don't think will make them i don't want them to kill me but i don't think they should love me but i don't understand why their affection's going up still so even though she's still oblivious she does at least know that they are starting to care for her all of them pretty much even though she doesn't understand why which is i think i'm really enjoying because sometimes it does get a bit like oh, no, they like you now because you're a nice person. You're not a villainess anymore. I did go and pre-order volume three, which comes out in May apparently, if it stays with that. So then the next volume I read was Oshinoko One, and this has had a lot of, lot of hype in the community. I think what I appreciated about this was, it wasn't what I was expecting. It definitely is more darker and it's probably, I feel like a sort of story, I think I'd struggle to compare it to other stories, which, is also quite nice sometimes. But yeah, it is quite a heavy read. I feel like it starts off like kind of cute and you're like, oh, okay, okay. And then just kind of gets darker and darker and darker. I feel like I don't, I, I'm not particularly in the like idol community fandom myself. I don't know how, if this potentially is an extreme portrayal of that or an accurate portrayal. Either way, even if it's like even slightly accurate, that's terrifying. I, oh my god, that is, that is genuinely scary. I think I, it was a good read. I don't think I, I'm, I'm not sure I enjoyed it. I think it just made me feel a bit down. I feel like this volume was like completely just set up for the future volumes. If that's the case, then I'll probably get into it more going forward. But this one just, it kind of felt like a prequel setup for what's going to happen coming forward. I also wasn't too keen that they had stars in their eyes. I don't know, it just kind of freaked me out a little bit. So like in the cover, like their, their eyes look like that throughout the whole volume. I don't know why, it just unnerved me a little. I have just finished filming the opening for my reorganization video, <laughs> which is why it's all set up like that. And I'm like, figured whilst I'm wearing an actual shirt and I'm not in pyjamas, I might as well record the next one. So the volume I finished this morning is Undead Unluck 10. 
I, again, remember, there be spoilers for all these. So a lot of this volume was the fight, a, a sort of beginning of the fight between Spring and Fuko, and I must say, I, I do like Undead Unluck, but I feel like I felt myself kind of cringing a bit during this volume, like it was very much like, you just gotta believe in that kind of mentality and that sort of camaraderie, and it was like, I do enjoy it, and it was kind of, it was, I did enjoy reading it, it just, mm, whilst reading it. It was kind of nice seeing Fuko actually come into her own a little. We've not really seen her, like, really go at it much on her own. She's usually paired up with Andy, but in this one he's kind of, he, he's not able to join in for reasons-ish, kind of, and it was, it was good. Also, Andy was nude a lot in, I think, the end, most of the volume. But yeah, I think every, every place where Andy appeared, he's not wearing clothing. <laughs> I did get a bit confused between characters. I think it's just because it's, I've been reading it quite slowly because just I've not I've been getting the volumes when they're three for two so it's been a bit of a gap between some of them. They brought in a character about part way through and I'm like I don't know who this person is at all and then they had like loads of backstory and stuff so I had to like go and check to see who they were. <laughs> okay so I have two more volumes that I read last night so the first off we have Free Life Fantasy Online Immortal Princess two. Um, so I'll be honest, I was quite disappointed with this one. I quite enjoyed volume one. I thought it was like quite neat, the concept and stuff, and then this one like completely went in a different direction. I found it a bit boring, I'll be honest. I think I gave this one like five out of ten. <sighs> my cat is like licking my phone. <laughs> so in the first volume we had a bunch of stuff with like her levelling up and being in a weird situation, and then this one she's like escaped the catacombs she was in, and she's in the starting town, and she kind of spends the whole time learning to cook and learning stuff about the game. I just found it a bit dull. It did hint that the next volume's going to have a bit more like fighty stuff, but I really said, I really liked volume one and this one was like, meh. Also, this is her sister and she kept calling her Oni-chan and it just felt super cringe. Again, the other volume I read was It's Upside Down. It was Honey Lemon Soda Volume 1, and this is one I've seen lots of people get really, really excited for in the community, so I did kind of have some high expectations for this. Uh, I must say, I'd have probably enjoyed it a lot more as a teen. I found it, like the name, horrendously sickly sweet, and I did struggle a little bit. I think, I don't know if I'm just getting a bit bored of like the high school trope where the female lead is like instantly or already head over heels in love with the guy. <sighs> <Come on. sighs> I've just read I think quite a few of those recently and some of the tropes I've enjoyed, like I enjoy lovesick Ellie because she's a bit more, yeah. I, I really liked how they were all trying to help her get out of her shell fight, uh, stand up to her bullies and prove her societal anxiety, that sort of thing. I did like that, it just, yeah, it, I mean it's a high school romance and I'm no longer a high schooler so I'm definitely not the target audience anymore, but what really astounded me was when I looked it up and it's on 21 volumes in Japan. 21? Oh my god. I hope we get some like rainbow spine stuff. Stop white stuff. Cat. You know. <laughs> Swear to God, cat. Yes, I don't think it was bad. I just. It was very sickly sweet. <laughs> okay, so this isn't a setup I've usually shown before, but this is like actually where I work day to day. There'll probably be a few more volume reviews from here. This is, yeah, this is my study, and this is the, the mess of my background. Nice, nice boxes here which are filled with manga that I need to ship out to Emma and Tiffany as soon as I can get to a post, bo post box, post office. Well, I need to finish packing them first. I mostly pack Tiffany's, I haven't finished packing Emma's. You need a new box Emma because the cats have ripped yours apart. You can also kind of see the manga that I'm planning on giving away. Hopefully by the time this video goes out I'll have actually put that giveaway video up and like my bin's halfway up because the cats like to climb in the bin. I don't think that there's any more questions, <laughs> let me know in the comments. Uh, so yeah, so to the, the volume I'm going to talk about today is a Faku. I'm going to be as PG as I can be for Faku. So normally with these, they're one shot volumes and every chapter is like a standalone Deal Rooney and there's kind of like a theme across all of them of some 
form or other. So in this one, we kind of had a story for the first half and then we had some one shots towards the end. I'll be honest, I didn't like this at all. It's one of my least favorite Faku. I've read some weird, weird Faku. And besides, I feel like some of them were going into it, I expected, I don't think I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm reading this out of morbid curiosity. This one I just assumed would be a regular Faku, but I didn't like it. I didn't like the theme. So the main story for most of the volume kind of surrounds itself between a relationship between a teacher and a student. And I know it's a Faku and it's fan male fantasy and all that, but I just, I didn't, nope. Nope, this is not one I would recommend, though I am very unlikely to ever recommend Fakus, to be honest, unless I really, really, really know you. But I believe the um, artist for this, which is Mimim50, is quite well known. And I think there's quite a f I actually have quite a few of these in English, which is surprising. Usually there's, I don't know if that's surprising or not, actually. But yeah, didn't like it. And though I feel like every chapter post the kind of story had something about it that made me feel off there was like i think one <laughs> one chapter where i was like this is fine to read I, it didn't make me feel too gross but load like every chapter made me feel a bit off in some way which isn't normally the case with faku usually it is outweighed the other way so i've read another manga volume uh, and I also decided to film this bit outside because it's snowing quite heavily around here, I heavily ish for West Yorkshire at least. There are a lot of cars going past but hopefully you don't hear them too much with my new mangled microphone. If you do, rip, rip sorry. <laughs> so the volume I've read is Rent a Really Shy Girlfriend Volume 3. Now obviously I don't have the volume on me right now because it is snowing and it will get wet. Instead I have put it in the window to the side. <laughs> for you to have a look at. There it is, isn't it? So lovely. So to be honest, I'm not a huge, huge fan of the main series. I think a lot of people are a bit put off by the main series, but I absolutely adore this singular character and I'm very happy that they're the one that got the spin off. Her name is Sumi and it's just kind of, she's really, it reminds me a bit like Komi. She's very socially awkward and is trying to improve that and just, her spin-off is her navigating trying to do that and there was a whole wonderful chapter about her trying to order ramen and her preparing to go into this ramen place and buy ramen and eat the ramen and i really enjoyed that and there was another one where she went to the cinema there was a really weird chapter though where like this kid rent rented her and he wanted to film a youtube video and he just kind of turned up with a camera and he was like, I'm filming a video of you. And obviously she's so shy and awkward, she didn't say anything. It just felt a bit weird. Like, why would you let someone do that without any prior consent or anything? Ah. And the kid kept crushing on her and it was all very strange. But yeah, I did quite enjoy it otherwise. I like the other chapters. I just, I don't care for the chapters where literally any of the other main series characters appear, which they did briefly at the end of the volume. And I just lost over that basically but it's a very expensive volume for what it is it took me like 10 minutes to read and it's like a nine pound after three for two price volume and don't like that okay now it's really really cold and the cars keep coming past so thanks for ben for holding the camera you should have put a coat on let's go inside <laughs> snow 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 ah! we are back in the study i say back in the study it's been a long few days since I recorded one of these. I don't remember the last one might have been in the study when I did this. Don't remember. I haven't done too much reading in the past few days, hence why there's been a bit of a time skip. I've just been doing the manga reorganization and I think that video will go up before this one. Um, but that's like all I've been doing. I've been doing that and then playing Final Fantasy XIV. I've not really done too much reading. I'm trying to get back into it a bit more. So these are three volumes I've read over the past couple of days. So first off we have Daughter of the Emperor. Now actually Daughter of the Emperor took me like four days to read. This was like I was slowly going through this while I was doing the manga reorganization. I say that like I'm done. I'm not done with the manga organization yet. Downstairs is mostly there, just need to start bringing stuff upstairs, but that's, that's where I am at this point in time. But yeah, this is kind of what I've been reading whilst I've been doing that. I found this such a slow read. I, I just found it a bit dull, boring. It had a lot of, it was very political in this volume and I just wasn't really feeling it that, that much. When there were bits that weren't too political, 
did enjoy it a bit more. This, this I just found it a bit of a slog, but I also don't know, did I find the volume a slog or was I just not in the mindset and I should have read something else? It is quite a long volume, but the, the coloured Yen Press series tend to be. Uh, I still think like the kid looks weird. I feel like the, the faces of the, the baby just looks weird. It's less a baby nowadays. I think like two or three. But yeah, I don't think I get ranked this one particularly highly. It is an isekai and it does have its moments. I just don't think I really found too much in this one. I really want her to age up, but at this rate, we're not going to see her become like even a teen for like another six volumes or five volumes or something crazy. And next up we've got Let's Buy the Land and Cultivate It in Another World Volume 1. Uh, Nisekai, as I've said multiple times, I wanted March to be a month where I tried to get through a lot of my Volume 1's of Isekais that I have not yet read. I've done alright so far. I I've got a whole bunch in my basket which I'm quite excited to go through. This was okay. It reminded me of... Um, farming life in another world. It's quite similar plot where he can kind of just farm whatever he feels like. He doesn't need a particular tool or seeds. He just kind of plants them and things are tilled and stuff. And he ends up fishing up a wife who's a mermaid. It was okay. It's, I'd say it's a very mid East Kai, like five, six out of ten. It was. I think I've enjoyed it more than Farming Life in Another World, but I enjoyed Farming Life in Another World volumes one and two loads. And then when I read three and I think four, I got a bit bored. I found them quite slow and dragged. So I'm a bit concerned about this, but it's quite similar-ish. To be fair, if you're interested in like farming, OP East Kai's, then this is another one. The volume I read before I went to bed last night was Wicked Trapper. Hunter of Heroes Volume 1. This is a plastic wrapped isekai. It's not too like sexually explicit, which is what a lot of plastic wrapped stuff is. This is very gory, like really gory. In well, in terms of what I generally read, it's, it's very gory. So be warned if you're interested in that. It's about a guy who on Earth, he designed traps in like video games and apparently the traps were too hard and no one could beat them and everyone hated him and told him he was like the worst person ever and no one would like him and then he gets east kind into this world and ends up trying to help this demon princess who is fighting off hordes of humans and he gets the ability to be able to create traps like using magic I was gonna say mana but it's very explicitly not mana in this it's miasma I think and he can just generate them in this dungeon to try and keep the princess safe from humans. You definitely see what his traps do to these humans. It's very like, kind of dealer rooney. So yeah, be careful with that. There are also other explicit moments that occur towards the end, which are very weird. And you're like, did I just read? So definitely go into this if you're interested, maybe read up on it. A lot of warnings, probably all the warnings so many so many explicit things i also couldn't find a volume two i tried to find a volume two to see if it was out um because i've had this a little bit now i can only find volume three maybe i'll find it in store at some point okay i have a little bit of a cold so if i'm coffee and sneezy and generally a bit bleh, that is why so i've not actually been doing much reading the past week which is really upsetting for me i've been just rearranging the manga as you can see behind me and it's just <sighs> Uh, so I just I haven't had the mental capacity to read. I've either been sorting manga or I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV. It's gotten quite bad actually. I am really trying to read a bit more. Um, so the first one I have read was Just Friends by Tokyo Pop. This is a one-shot GL series. I really, really like the spine. I've been really liking the Tokyo Pop spines a lot. And this is the start. I just really like that. I don't know why. So first off, this isn't really a manga. When I was reading it, I was like... I'm not really getting manga vibes from this, it feels more like I'm reading a graphic novel. And then I looked up the author, and actually they're Spanish, so I suppose technically it isn't a manga, because it's a Spanish artist, but in a manga format, and Tokyo Pop is selling it as a manga, it's listed as a manga, it's in the manga format, it says manga all over it, but I, it didn't feel like I was reading a manga, it felt like I was reading a graphic novel. Overall, I wasn't actually too keen, I didn't really enjoy it, it made me feel a bit sad, a bit down. We're kind of like jumping backwards and forwards between present day and 
the past when these two went to camp and then when they're meeting up many many years later I assume like late 20s early 30s sort of age based on what they what, the way they're talking and how many years they say have passed and stuff I don't know it just all felt a bit down it was all about like acceptance and stuff and being happy about who you are and which is fine I just I just didn't really like this. I think just going the forward and back and the present day just felt quite down. And then there was a weird bit at the end, because again, spoilers for all of this, but it pretty much implied that they kind of already have partners now. And then they kind of cheated on their partners with each other. And it's like, what? And then it kind of just ended. It didn't feel like the story wrapped up. It kind of just felt like it stopped which I didn't really like. Also, Tokyo Pop is expensive, so I'm not sure I can recommend this too much. If you're interested in... <sighs> I've got a girl's cat using the scratching post that's under my feet. So One Shot GL, if you're into that sort of thing, maybe try it. It just it wasn't one that I enjoyed too much. The right, next volume I read, which is another Tokyo Pop Love is Love series, is Confessions of a Shy Baker. Once again, can we appreciate the spine? Now I really really did like this one, I especially enjoyed that the couple are like in their 30s, they're in Japan and they both like have jobs and it's like just two people trying to navigate being gay in Japan and trying to live a normal life. It was really interesting to read and really nice and sweet and wholesome. I also like that this guy makes like bakes for the, his partner and he's trying to lose weight so he's baking like healthy stuff so he like walks through the healthy things he's making and how he makes substitutes and then they give recipes at the end of the chapters great really like this one i'm definitely going to be looking forward to volume two because this isn't a one shot it's ongoing next volume i read i'm gonna speed run this because it looks like i nearly am out of storage on my phone because i've not copied any of these videos off in weeks, whoopsie, is Prince Raya 3. I pretty much was like, I wanna just read something and I grabbed something off the shelf because I've got shelves in like most rooms now. And I decided to grab this and I was like, let's just give it a go, jump into it, try and read a bunch. So I had read one and two like two years ago. I didn't really like it. I don't like the main character. I still don't really like the main character, but I actually did enjoy this volume more. And there is one double page panel where I was like, that's pretty sick. Can I quickly find it? So of course, spoilers. So spoilers is Freya when she jumps up, climbs up this tower and grabs the flag. I think that's such a sick looking double page spread. But yeah. So I'm gonna actually try and read a few more Prince Freya's now that I've got the characters in my head because it, it's been so long I had started to forget some of the character names. Like there was a reveal at the end of the volume and it was meant to be like a big, oh my God, it's this person. And I was just like, who is this person? But I do have up to volume 8, so I'm going to try and read a few more because I got through it quite quickly, especially since I've read so few volumes this month. I'm going to try and binge a couple of series, I think, to try and help me bring that number back up. Though I do have some volume 1s I want to read. I was on a roll and trying to read Isekai and I've like fallen off that quite heavily. <laughs> what will I read next? Prince Maria, what am I talking about? Oh, I have such a mess today, but I have read a volume in the car, so we're going to talk about it because we're in the car. I read Imaginary Volume 1 and I'll be honest, I wasn't that keen. I found it really dull and I found it a bit of a struggle to follow along. There was quite a few characters and it kind of jumped around a bit and I think the point is meant to be like they're all adults but they've still got like quite active imaginations and the, ga the game, oh my gosh I'm tired, the manga kind of like what's the word, visualises their what they're imagining which is kind of neat. I just I don't really follow it. I wasn't too keen, wasn't too bothered. It was fine. I know a lot of other people really like it, so maybe it just hasn't hit with me. Or I'm not in the mood for that kind of thing, maybe. I'm quite, quite tired and I really had to push myself to read it. Which is a shame. Meh. Okay, so I haven't actually filmed a bit about what I've read for a couple of days. I know I've completely gone against what I said I was going to do for this whole video. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to try and be better for the rest of the month. Though there isn't actually that much of the month left. So first off, I read, uh, yeah, the rest of the Prince Bray that I had. So that is volumes four, five, six, seven, and eight. Hopefully you can see those, okay? What I must say is I definitely think it got better. I definitely enjoyed it more the further in I got. I liked the political intrigue. I'm still not a big fan of Freya. I don't really like 
there are moments where she thinks she just has to say something and she says it and then it gets them into a bunch of bother and that just really annoys me. It's like, oh, come on. I kind of feel bad, like, I don't like that she always seems really sad and down, but also she isn't in a great situation, so I kind of get it. I like the political intrigue a lot. I've enjoyed, the, like, all of that that's been happening. But I also don't like how thin they are, though in the end of one of these volumes, the artist said that they had to go into hospital, which meant that there were less chapters in the volume than there were meant to be, which can then made me feel really like a terrible person. I definitely think it got better the further in I got, but it took, I'd say, to volume four for me to really feel it. Volume three was like, okay, a bit better. I didn't enjoy volume one and two, volume three was okay, and then I enjoyed it more um, the further in I got, for sure. I was not able to tempt Tiffany to try anymore, though. This volume I read was I'm the Evil Lord of an Intergalactic Empire, volume one. This is an isekai, it's meant- it's a bit weird, it's a bit weird. There's a whole weird thing with the ages, he's been isekai into the world and like everyone ages a bit differently than they do on earth so generally the lifespan is to like three, four hundred years old so what we would consider a 16 year old on our planet is like a 50 year old in this world so he like-, it, like ages them up really quickly but there are some really weird questionable scenes when he's like seven with this like busty maid of his who's a robot which is her i believe do we get a panel that's not too creepy nope oh that's yeah bust and he's like mm, ideal softness you're like, oh, you're like three at this moment stop it there's also a really weird thing with like revenge and stuff. When he's on Earth, it turns out his fiance or wife, kid of theirs, wasn't actually his. She'd had an affair and there was problems with work and they weren't him, but he got blamed. And then this guy came along and is like, Do you want to be East do you want to be reborn in another world where you can reenact your revenge or something? And this guy's like, Yes. So this guy, like, weird person's, like, facilitated it all. He's trying to build up all this resentment for this guy. Don't really know why. It's all a bit weird. I wasn't too impressed, it's fine. I like my revenge is guys, but I don't think this really hit it for me. Mostly I think because, like, his revenge isn't against the people he wants to seek revenge against, because he's been reborn into another world, and now he's trying to sort out this, like, world that he's been reborn into. And meh, meh. Nah. What else did I read? I swear I won't read- Oh yeah, I read this. Tatsuki Fujimoto Before Chainsaw Man 17 to 21, which is a series of short stories by the artist of Chainsaw Man. I have not yet read Chainsaw Man. I'm a bit nervous because of the hype. I'm like putting it off. Probably gonna try and do a buddy read in September sometime when the box set comes out and a whole bunch of other people might pick it up and I can read it with them and we can experience it together. I think it's my current thought process. I have said previously one shots of time kind of hit and miss for me like this is a whole bunch of short one shots few chapters and I don't think it really did it for me there's one that I kind of liked which one I like this one love is blind uh, I really quite like that one I like the the silliness of the of, like the humor and stuff but I wasn't too impressed but as you know I quite like the last one with the vampire as well okay very like half I enjoyed half I didn't I just wasn't just didn't really, meh. Which I think is, again, my issue with one-shots and short stories. Like, either they're really good or they're really not. <laughs> and I just don't think I felt the first half of the volume, but then I really felt the second half of the volume. I think there is another one coming out with short stories. I think 22 to something, maybe. I don't know when it's out, at least in the UK. But it was okay. If you're a Chainsaw Man fan, Chainsaw Man fan. Maybe? Maybe I would have enjoyed it more if I'd read Chainsaw Man. Don't know. Hello. I have been a terrible person and ugh, March has just not been my month. I've been very, very busy. Not even, even during my just evenings and weekends and I've just not had as much drive to read as I usually do. In fact, March 2023 is probably one of my lowest reading months in like years, which is horrendously unfortunate considering it's the month I decided to vlog what I was reading. Of course it was. I don't think it was because I was vlogging because like sometimes, I, I mean sometimes I've been accumulating reads and then I talk about it a bunch. I've just 
I've just been tired, I've just been tired. Hopefully April will be my month. I've got, I'm a bunch ahead of my videos and a whole bunch of other things that were eating up my time aren't gonna be eating up my time. Um, I have actually quite enjoyed doing this. I wish I'd done more vlogging immediately when I'd read something. Sometimes I, I'd read something and I wasn't able to vlog at that moment, so I could end up accumulating like the last bunch I have to talk about I've accumulated over a few days. Do let me know in the comments what you thought of this style of video because I would be interested if you'd like me to do it again. What are you doing? I think it might have actually worked out not too bad because I have like waffled about these volumes a lot. Last March in 2022 I read 66 volumes so if I read 66 volumes and taught like two minutes for each one, yeah. It'd be hours long. So maybe it's a good thing I didn't read as much this month, but let me wrap up the stuff that I read at the end of March and then I'll do an actual close. So I've got about five volumes. Most of these uh, were unboxed in um, video thumbnail I'll put here. I'm hoping it'll have probably gone up before this video will have gone up. I think it was a big Forbidden Planet haul, so there was a bunch of new Viz releases in it. So the first volume I read out of that was, of course, Come You Can't Communicate 23. Must say, what a wonderful volume. Again, 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 there will be spoilers for every volume I talk about this. I am going to be horrendously spoilering this vol volume. If you want to skip and not see spoilers, leave, jump ahead, skip to the next volume or something like that. I think they've calmed down slightly. Hello, Mika. Hello. Okay, so yes, I read Comey 23 and okay, so again, I've spoiler warning this now. So in Comey 23, we finally see a confession between Comey and Tadano. Is that how you pronounce it? Tadano? Basically, they tell each other they like each other and they start dating. Oh, so happy. It was so lovely, lovely done. And there was the whole kind of like, love triangle happening where the other girl whose name is Manbaggy liked him and they were like what do we do and at the beginning of the volume she's kind of confessing and he's like yeah okay let's give it a go and she's like you don't actually like me you're being polite aren't you and he was like I'm so sorry and she's like go, go tell Kobe you like her and he's like how did you know and it's like everyone knows where was my fate I actually I, I reading this I ended up like sobbing I burst into tears Where's the scene that made me cry? Basically, he's like run off to go and confess to Comey and she's like in the classroom and my Maggie starts crying and then um, I've forgotten her name. She's not like student counsel, but she's very strict. Like comes in and she catches her crying and she just like runs in and gives her a massive hug. Can I see? She gives her a massive hug and uh, my Maggie's like, what are you doing? I'm completely fine. And just this one panel of her going, you aren't, and I was like, <gasps> I, I don't know, it just like a couple of moments and then we flip over the page after a bit more conversation and it just like, she just, <sighs> I was never too big on my bag because I, I just, I felt like it became an unnecessary hurdle between Comey and Dano, no, now in hindsight I feel like it's really, it, gave, it was somewhere that, someone that allowed Comey to be open with about her feelings for him. It was just such a sweet volume and I just kept crying and I just keep stopping to like take a break because I couldn't actually read the pages through my tears which is horrific. <laughs> but yeah, this, I absolutely love this volume. It's just such a lovely volume. I feel like we've really worked up to this. We've seen so much progress with Comey being able to communicate and talk about not even just talk but also talk and share her feelings with other people and for it to be the, the person that like helped set it all off, helped her begin her journey just ah uh, <laughs> i'm gonna move on for a cry again okay next volume i read was spy family nine uh, i enjoy spy family my nine that i enjoy spy family i think this volume was just a bit more much the same i think nothing I, it's good it's fun it's enjoyable but i don't think there was much like in this that jumped out at me that makes sense. Actually, I did enjoy the chapter with Bond, Bond like being able to see that bad things are gonna happen, so he tries to stop them, but inadvertently it makes it look like he's been a bad dog and uh, 
that was quite a fun chapter. At the beginning of the volume, we're kind of wrapping up the whole arc with them on a cruise ship, and then we kind of do a f few little, like, not really connected stories. I wonder if the end of this volume is going to lead into the next arc, where this, like, power hungry teacher who gives the bolts that are bad for students is just like running around giving loads and she gives one to Anya right at the end of the volume. I wonder if that's going to be the next arc because otherwise post the cruise we've kind of drifted a little bit in this volume. Again like I enjoy it but I don't I don't think this volume had the same sparks and the other volumes have had for me. Villainess stands the heroes playing the antagonist to support her faves. Volume one. It's a villainess. It's a villainess. How exciting. Isn't that exciting, Yuna? She's not interested. How disappointing. I have not raised them correctly. Okay, so in this, again, villainess reincarnated into a video game that she's played before. However, a mobile game, video game, not sure. A, a game. And she's the villainess, and she is like, she aggressively stands so far pretty much all the characters that we've run into. Um, but because she loves them so much, what she decides she needs to do as the villainess is try and play her role perfectly, which is to say, do exactly what the villainess did in the story to make sure that because the villainess's actions kind of help the characters develop themselves as characters and people she doesn't want to blow that so she like is doing exactly what the villainess does to make sure that they kind of end up in the place they're supposed to the beginning of this is kind of like the reveal that the villainess is behind all this bad stuff and everyone's like you've done all this all this terrible stuff is you uh oh, we're going to like arrest or banish you or something she, she's like playing this whole villainous terrible person but actually she's just like on the inside squealing going like oh my god they're so cute look at them do this so we've got like we've introduced a new character and she's like playing her villainess role and then the next page is just like oh my god in the flesh oh and it's like that kind of thing where she just like on the outside a stripped strong villainess and then on the inside she's like oh my god oh my god oh my god, oh my god. the only way she and the only character she's kind of broken this with is so when she was east kind into the world she was like a teenager or a young young teenager the teenagers in the story anyway young teenager child maybe and she went, ran off to like rescue one of the characters that she knew was being abused also as a child and like instead of him growing up to become like a world-renowned assassin because he's in her care he's become like her butler and he's like super loyal to her and there's like reveal of feelings between the two and oh, it got me super flustered reading it it was super nice to read it oh my very like i very much enjoyed it she's kind of now gone on the run now because she, even though she was like i mean she's done all these terrible things even though it's in the name of developing these characters she's done these terrible things so she's run off so she could not be you know arrested banished had terrible things done to her or that sort of stuff. Really very much enjoyed, but of course it's Villainess. Am I really gonna not enjoy it if it's Villainess? <laughs> and the next read was Yakuza Lover Volume 8. Again, I did check and it, yeah, it took me so long to get Volume 7. I don't think it's been a month since I read Volume 7 and 8. I've definitely started to dip off this. I thought the beginning was great of the series. I loved like the high risk sexual tension and all that. It was like, ooh, how nice. And now it just... <sighs> Now I'm just finding it annoying <laughs> a bit. So in this volume, it is Yuri. It's Yuri's birthday and what has Oya done? He's gone and bought a private island for them to go and celebrate on because yeah, of course. <sighs> ben, where's my private island? As soon as they get to the island, something happens and Oya kind of like has to leave immediately. Like he doesn't even look back at Yuri. He's just like, off I go onto a helicopter. What happens? So she stays on the island and like the his goons kind of just help feed her dinner and set the fireworks off and she's like having a nice walk on the beach a few hours later when a helicopter comes flying along and like she looks at it and she just starts running into the ocean screaming his name and he's like on the edge of the helicopter and, and the, 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 the pilot's like we're, we're, we're over water we can't really go much lower and he's like I'll just get wet and then he dives in the water and then they're just like swimming to each other screaming each other's names and it's like 
what am I reading? What is the, what? Look at that. It just, I just found it super, super cringe, cringy worth, cringy worthy. And it just like, properly, why? 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 And then there was another panel. What was the panel that got to me that made me giggle? This. What is this? What is happening to her face here? She looks like she's been absorbed by the water or the sand. I think the series has wrapped up in Japan and I hope the arc that's just started in this is going to be the final arc. I don't know how much longer I can go on with it. I enjoyed it at the beginning. I enjoyed it at the beginning. I think just this they're so codependent on each other and I understand that's the point and it's that like obsessive, aggressive heated romance but I think just after eight volumes of it I've gotten a bit bored of it. Maybe if she was a bit more kick-ass like there was a whole thing where she learned like martial arts and stuff and I want to see her using that more but I don't know I don't know I don't know. I do like we've got a yellow volume I have said previously that yellow volumes are like my least common colour volume so it's all really nice to have this one. I don't have we had any green Yakuza lover? I'm hoping for some green ones before the end of the series because we've had a few blues. So I like their rainbowiness. <laughs> oh yeah, there was a big cliffhanger at the end. Forgot about that. I think the next volume's out in like June, July sometime, so not a horrendous amount of time to wait for the cliffhanger, I suppose. Final volume I read in March is Asumi Chan is interested in lesbian brothels too. Now, considering the title and the fact it's a plastic wrap series, this is a surprisingly wholesome title, I suppose. It is a GL series. It is about this character, Asumi, who has like a childhood crush, or she's in love with her childhood friend, and she's kind of looking for her. She's trying to find her because they, they kind of got split up as kids. Um, someone went moved away from school or something and she's trying to find her again and she understands that she's working as a um, sex worker somewhere at this company. Obviously they don't share pictures or names for like safety reasons so she's kind of just going making her way through all the people booking them to try and find her friend um, but along the way she's kind of just having a nice time with these women treating her well having sex with all these women <laughs> and she's enjoying it so but all the characters are super like kind and lovely to each other there's not been any there's no like weird or questionable characters they're just all really nice <laughs> i can't show you that thing i can't show you that bit i can't show you that bit then there must be pages i can show you it's a very cutesy art style i do think they look potentially a little bit young for the sort of scenes you see them in but it's i have Red worse, though I'm not sure that's really a defence. I also don't think that paints me in a good light. There's kind of like a different theme per chapter, be it cosplay or multiple people or... Yeah, I don't know if I'm helping it. It is actually quite wholesome. It's just... Wholesome, smart GL, I think, I suppose. <laughs> right, so that is everything I read in March and why thoughts hopefully if I've edited this, edited this correctly. Sorry I haven't read as much as I hope to have read but again I mean I've talked for like three minutes per volume for this this like ending clip so maybe it's not a bad thing that I read a little less this month. Do let me know what you thought of this kind of vlog. I would if I did it again I'd definitely try and do it where I try and record my thoughts a lot more prompt than leaving it a few days and doing a few at a time though to be fair it's only been about three days since i read three four days since i read all of that so it's still quite fresh in my head i'm not like doing it a month later or anything or at the end of the month i did quite enjoy it it is nice to talk about what i've been reading i don't do it too often unless like i talk about it as part of my whole videos if you haven't already don't forget to give this video a like comment and subscribe if you're interested in early access to my videos why not check out my channel members i'm trying to say about four weeks ahead at the moment plus you get some neat emotes when i live stream which i'm trying to do a bit more frequently hopefully by the time this one goes out i'll have done at least two live streams i've done one so far i'm going to try and do another one in the next couple of weeks from 
now, which is early April. Also be sure to check out my social media and affiliate links found down below, like the Dudettes Discord server, woo! <laughs> Otherwise I hope you have the most wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye! Read your manga.